the best farming strategies at Town Hall 13. Let's check out the ones without the heroes. We have got Sneaky Goblins. This has to be the perfect strategy for farming. It's easy and you can train your spell deployment with this strategy. Let me show you. First we have got this outer layer of collectors. We will take care of that with just a single Sneaky Goblin per collector. Then we have got collectors in the second layer. For that we will use a Super Wall Breaker and collect the loot with our Sneaky Goblins. At least two of them. Then we will move on to the third layer. Here we will need to use our spells. And in the fourth, we will be using spells in that as well. We are not going to use the heroes, so let's begin. The outer layer. We will deploy one sneaky goblin per collector. We have got some collectors here. Let's not leave even a single one behind. Because later on, even a single one standing, the troop deployment sometimes gets a little bit messy. This done, that's pretty easy. The first layer goes down very fast. It should happen on the 20 seconds. It's time for the next phase, so we will use our super wall breaker. You can also use a wall breaker or a log launcher, but right now we don't need that, so we will just work with our super wall breakers. There's the dark laser storage, so first we will deploy one test sneaky goblin. The way is clear, no spring traps, so we will deploy more. There is another dark elixir drill, so we will deploy one super wall breaker. And after this, the second layer will be taken care of. We do not need any test sneaky goblin in this one because the archer tower and the drill are placed too close to each other so there cannot be any traps. Now we will have to aim for the third layer. For that I will be using my wall breaker here that will tank and let's blow this wall with one super wall breaker. Now two more to have a guaranteed way up to the second wall. The way is set so now we will send test sneaky goblins on both sides. The way is clear, four more on both the sides. That should get the job done. There are more collectors on this side, but I will not make any more ways with the super wall breakers. This should be enough. On the bottom side, we will deploy two more and that will open up our way up to the gold storage. Let's deploy four more on both of these. We also deployed four on the previous gold storage. And here we will use our spells because we are running low on our sneaky goblins. This is the third layer and this is usually when you use your spells. We will deploy three of them and let them get closer to the storage and then use the invisibility. That will get the job done. Now, not a lot of things left. Another way to get deeper into the base is by blowing the first wall normally and then using the invisibility to reach the next layer of wall. The way is open so now we will send three sneaky goblins and when they get close we will make them invisible. The scatter shots are out of ammo but even if they were loaded, they couldn't stop this strategy. Now finally, it's time for the town hall. For that, we will deploy one jump spell that was not absolutely necessary because the top way was already open. We'll start with one test sneaky goblin again and then send at least five more. Raise them up, make them invisible and we'll get everything. We'll use one more invisibility spell to get the clan castle down. Let's deploy the rest of the troops and here we have it. That's pretty good loot. I will give the strategy 5 out of 5 in terms of loot. About the next strategy, we are going with mass baby dragons with some lightning and rage. Just like last time, we will get the outside collectors with the baby dragons first, take out the air defenses with lightning spell and we also have a stone slammer in this one. You can train that so I'm including that in the army. Let's get the air defenses first and with them it is ideal if we can pick up one archer tower. Let's deploy baby dragons here, they will take out this section. It's nice once in a while when you find rushed bases, which are dead. Let's deploy more baby dragons, take out that air defense. The archer tower should fall pretty soon. Here, they got everything down. Now we will aim for these collectors, they are also stored just there. Let's get this royal champion down with our baby dragons, also rage them. And this rage will also help the balloons get a little bit inside towards that air defense. Let's deploy a storm climber here. I want a little bit of tanking. It will seem that air defense will not fall. The balloons and the storm slammer are going to avoid that. It's fine. We got all the loot from this side anyways. Let's deploy more on this side. And after that we have got a little bit more on the bottom side. Usually we cannot pick up the town hall with this strategy. That's because town hall 13 has a giga inferno. And it's gonna melt through our baby dragons. But even without that, it's fine. And if you are using the heroes, then you can get the town hall without any problem. For the sake of the video, I'm not going to use my heroes because it works fine even without them. We have got six baby dragons remaining. I don't think I will be needing them. Let's wait for this baby dragon to take out that storage. He's going to do it. Hey, 
and done. Now let's pick up that clan castle. There might be something inside. So we will deploy all of our baby dragons from the top side towards that air defense. And after that, they will go towards that clan castle. One of the baby dragons has split off from the group and it is in the raged mode. This is gonna help, it's gonna save us some time. This group will eventually join this baby dragon over here and it's going to lose the rage but we're going to pick that up as well but nothing inside now the town hall will melt through our baby dragons easily and we're going to finish at 80 percent and pretty much good loot not bad i will give this strategy 3 out of 5 because it's not that strong under certain circumstances the third strategy is miners it does not work in these kind of bases so let's try to do it in here First and foremost, we are going to use two electro dragons on both of these corners. Of course, this is not going to end up very well, but I just want to show you the general execution of this strategy. After that, we will charge the miner from the middle. We also have one siege barrack in this one. We will deploy that somewhere to get some value. No heroes, of course. Let's deploy the e-drag here and on the bottom side as well. They are not going to get so much value out of it because of the placement of these buildings. Miners also do not tend to work very good in these kind of bases unless there is a really good funnel set. And with just these two electro dragons, we are not going to do that. Queen charge would have been a better option, but since we are not using the heroes, electro dragons it is. After that, let's deploy this siege barrack here. The Pekka is going to get towards the king. I would like to preserve its health, so we will just use our miners. The miners should go towards that elixir storage, so let's deploy one heal here. And now, a little bit of funnel set, it's not that great. The Electro Dragons did better than I expected. This strategy is very vulnerable to clan castle troops. If you do not have your heroes, then it is very likely that you will one star, or you might even not get all the loot. So this is the reason why I put this one in the third. But, if you find some dead bases, where the clan castle is guaranteed to be empty, then you can use this one. And they will do pretty much good. My hands are itching to use those heroes, but I will not do that. We are running out of heal spells now, and we are going to lose miners left and right from this point on. The Pekka is still alive somehow, and she will go to the next compartment after she has taken care of the wall. The wizards might get those gold storages. Well, the Pekka changed her mind and she went out. That is okay for us. The miners are going to get stopped by the final compartment, and the wizards are not going to get past this archer tower. As expected, this strategy is going to lose a lot of the loot that was available in the base, but it is what it is. These are the good farming strategies of Town Hall 13. Now if you want to see strong attack strategies that get 3 stars, then check out this video. And before we end this video, I would like to thank L8R, Ankush Mehta, YOLO Gamer 99166 and Ultimate MS3 for sending me the friend request. And if you would like to do the same, then this is my player ID. So, I'll see you in the next one. Bye then.